UFC bet with me, and we're back at it, folks. My name's Mill Young, aka MMA Locker Room here, part of Pick Dogs, and I'm gonna be going over this week's UFC Fight Night card, headlined by Amanda Lemos taking on Werner Janderoba. But before we do that, man, we got a lot more fights to talk about before we get down to the main event, man. This card, some people might look at it and say, "Hey, man." I don't recognize a lot of these names on this card, so that's why we got to definitely dig into this card and give you guys some good value because uh, I'm familiar with a lot of these fighters. I like this card because you don't really got no fighters that's more than a minus 200 favorite on there. So, hey, man, if the price is right, you can make a, a good bet on either side, you know, as long as you guys got your guys' uh, you know, picks in the right way. Hey, it's all about how we're going to attack this week and get paid. Let's go ahead and get it started, man. Welcome to the UFC Bet With Me series, man. Last week, what we do? Went 7-4, and four, man. Hit on some dogs, man. Charles Johnson came through for us. Muslim Salikov came through for us. Tracy Cortez, my girl. Oh, my gosh. She didn't come through for us at all in that one, though, man. How'd you guys do last week? Let me know in the comments below. And, of course, man, the parlay, we came through when we hit. So we're trying to do the same dang thing this week. So make sure you guys are watching all the way at the end of the video. Because at the end of the video, I'll give you guys out my locker room parlay, okay? And now look, let me know exactly who are you guys betting on this week and how would you guys do last week. All right, man. Let's go ahead and get it started, man. The first fight of the night. All right, it's going to be the heavyweights, man, taking place. Muhammad Usman, 11-3, taking on Thomas Peterson, 8-2. Muhammad Usman opened up a minus 130 favorite. I think he's down to, like, same price tag, minus 135. Come back on Peterson's at a plus 115. Let's talk about the matchup in this one, man. All right, two heavyweights. The fight goes the distance at minus 190. I like that as my best bet in here. If you guys are going to ask me my honest pick in here, Thomas Peterson... Is a guy to where he's going to go out there and go for the wrestling, go for the takedowns. But if he's not able to get in, if it stands on the feet, he's not going to be putting up too much volume. Muhammad Usman, he's a guy that's, yes, the brother of Kamar Usman. He's going to go out there, clinch you up against the cage. He can mix in the wrestling, um, you know, and he's going to strike like every 8 to 10 seconds, you know. Um, And when he strikes, it's not technically sound. But in this one, I got to give a pick. Thomas Peterson, I don't think he's going to be able to get the wrestling going all throughout these three rounds in here. So I'm going to go with Muhammad Usman in this one, man. But I'm not too uh, not too invested in the first fight of the night on two fighters who I, I really don't trust in the UFC. Next fight taking place, man. We got a good, man. We got a women's fight taking place, man. Luana Carolina, 10-4, taking on Lucy Pulidovia, 14-9. All right. Luana Carolina, she's going to be the taller girl with the bigger reach advantage, okay, Lucy Pulidova, she's a girl that goes out there and fights with grit, what is grit, grit just means when, when you ain't got nothing going, you just gonna keep coming forward and try to get the job done, that's her, um, she's been mixing in the wrestling with her, uh, up and coming fights, her striking is not there, if it stays on the feet, she's gonna get hit, and Luana Carolina, uh, she hits pretty hard, the opening odds got Luana Carolina at a minus 115. Come back on Pulidova as a plus 105. I like Pulidova in this spot, man. I think she's been getting better fight by fight. She got robbed in one of her uh, fights. In uh, her last fight, out, she didn't get the win over Alien Perez. But I think when it comes down to it in here, this is nothing I'm going to the window with. But the pick is going to be Lucy Pulidova. And I definitely think that fight goes the distance as well. Next fight, though, man. This one's going to be a good one, too. Trey Ogden, 17 wins and 6 losses, taking on Luke Razabov, 18-5-1. Let's talk about the gambling odds. All right, man. So you had Trey Ogden, who opened up a big underdog, okay? He was like a plus 140 on the books. Now he's down to a minus 105. Looks like somebody put some money on him. All right, Luke Razabov. He has about three or four fights now in the UFC. I know him like the back of my hand because he used to fight in the PFL uh, tournament where I do media for. And he was able to actually go to the finals, I think, like once or twice. Wasn't able to get the belt and win, but he's got there, um, you know. In this fight, though, I think both these guys got similar styles. They're, they're kind of like guys that want to get the wrestling going, you know, and want to get this fight going to the distance. Luke Rosenbaugh is going to be the more powerful puncher out here. I usually bet on him 
a lot in the UFC and the PFL. I did have Kareem Al Sawadi, the guy that he fought last time out. I had a play on him, and Kareem was winning the whole fight, and then Lewis came back in the third round and won. In this fight, though, Trey Ogden, man, he's a guy that it seems like he's been improving fight by fight. He runs his own gym um, over there where he lives at. He has uh, fighters coming up, too, that's actually doing good under his tutelage. He's a smart guy. The fight IQ, I give him a B. Um, the fight resume, I give him a C. When it comes to the cardio, I give him a B. And the game plan and ability, I'm giving him an A, folks. Look, fighting is more than just fighting, okay? Sometimes you do got to use your brain and mental sport behind it. And he's one of the guys that he puts together a game plan for his opponent, okay? So he looks at his opponent as if, you know... A football team looks as a defensive line and saying, okay, where are they vulnerable at? You know, like like their defensive tackle isn't strong right here, so we're going to blitz them on third down or something, right? So so they put it together a game plan to where they can overcome a better team by putting together a good game plan. The same could be said about Trey Ogden, I think, man. I think he puts together great game plans that gives, his, uh, that gives him the ability to to just win fights. You know, he knows how to expose the weaknesses on his opponents in here. I bet Trey Ogden last time out against Kurt Hollaball. Kurt, um, you know, we were able to get the money in here. On this one, man, uh, I, I'm, I'm torn a little bit, man. Uh, I think Trey Ogden is going to put together a game plan to win against Luke Rizovoff. Um I, I'm not getting to the window with this one yet, though. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's, hard, it's hard, man, because... I like Louis too, and I think that he has a, a path to win. Because Trey Ogden, if it stays on the feet, Razabov can knock him out, you know. Um, and Razabov, he can mix in the takedowns too as well and go for the reversals. Ah, oh, man, and, and, and the price, it's a pick em. It's a pick em pretty much, and you see why, man. Um, But, yeah, man, in this one, I, I got... Ah, shit, man. I'm going with my first reaction, man. My first reaction... Was Trey Ogden, so I guess I'm going with him in this one, man. But uh, I'm not betting on that one either. I'm, I'm staying, I'm staying, I'm staying home on that one, man. Uh, check with me later on in the week, though. We'll see. All right, next fight taking place: Miranda Maverick, 15 and five, taking on Deanna Bobo Bosa, uh, seven and two. Miranda Maverick's opened up a minus two twenty five favorite on the books. We made money with her last time out against Angela Lee. Okay, uh, I think she was like a minus one seventy. We played her straight and just you know. Took it to the bank. Deanna Barbosa, she's a plus 185. We made money with her last time out in the UFC. She made a UFC debut. She's a jiu-jitsu fighter. Likes to get you down to the ground. You know, coming from the LFA organization, okay? Um, She's a big fighter, too. Big physique. Uh, she's going to have the bigger height advantage in this fight against Miranda Maverick. Miranda Maverick is kind of overall good at everything, man. She's good at striking. She's good at wrestling. Um, her, She does struggle with the takedown defense, though. In this one, man, let's get to the bet. I like Miranda Maverick to win by decision. I've been betting her and backing her for a while now. Got a few interviews with her, too. Um, but in this one, I just think that she has more tools to the fight in here. Deanne Barbosa, she is going to hit hard, okay? She might pull guard, you know. But Miranda Maverick is overall the better fighter. I mean, we've seen her time and time again. Um, you know, putting on great performances. Uh, that fight against Macy Barber is one of the highlights of her career, even though she didn't get the scorecards right. Uh, you know, we all thought she won. The judges gave it to Macy Barber, and it was one of those fights. But besides that, man, um, you know, she did lose to Jasmine Jurdavicious in a fight where she got poked in the eye. Kind of was, you know, without one eye. But besides that... She's like, I, I, I've been liking all of her fights, you know, um, and she's improving at a steady pace. Miranda Mavericks to play. Um, I played her straight out of minus 190. Let's keep it going, man. Next fight taking place. Cody Gibson, 20 wins and 10 losses taking on Brian Kelleher. All right, man. Minus 195 for Cody Gibson in this one. Brian Kelleher is a fighter that just fought Cody Garbrandt. He had neck, he had spinal surgery or something like that. He was on the sideline. Contemplating retirement, okay? Last fight on his contract, okay? Oh, I think he's like 0-3 fight, fight losing streak or something, man. Like the writing is on the wall, right? You, you can say so, man. I think so. I think Cody Gibson is going to be able to do enough just to get the win in here. I wouldn't be surprised if Brian Kelleher could submit him because Brian Kelleher seems like he has so many wins by submission. I think he has about seven of them or something like that. Um, But 
Cody Gibson in this one, money's going to come in on him because I think the storyline is going to be out there at the, hey, man, this is probably going to be Brian Kelleher's retirement fight. And Cody Gibson is his, is his school teacher. I think that he can... That, that he didn't learn in his two losses. Hey, I need to get this win. I just had a baby, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago or something. So I think he's going to be able to put together a smart enough game plan to get that extra check to get that win. Because look, folks, you only get paid uh, a certain amount if you show up. If you win, you get paid double that. So yes, like in the fighters' contracts, he's probably on a twenty. He's probably on like a a sixteen thousand, <laughs> sixteen thousand to show, sixteen thousand if you win. So imagine, okay. So that's why a lot of fighters really want to win. Uh, but the average fighters out there, they're on like a 40, 40, 60, 60, 80, 80 and stuff. You know. Um, yeah. Let's keep it going, man. Next fighter taking place. This one's gonna be a good one, man. I really like this one. Jin Ying Lei taking on Hyder Mill. Ah, uh, minus 190 for Lee. All right, Hyder Mill, underdog in this one. I don't think this one's going the distance in here. I like both of these fighters. I've been going back and forth on it, man. I could see a case where Hyder Mill looks real good in the first round, but I think Yeong Lee is going to be able to turn it around and extend it to the second, third round, and that's when he's going to be able to use our wrestling and, you know, um, get the win. I think Lee's going to be able to get the win in this one. Uh, this is one of the like uh, Korean fighters, I want to say, or the uh, Asian fighters uh, that's going to be fighting on this card. And this um this this card is implemented by like a lot of Korean fighters fighting on this. So for some reason, I think they're marketed and they're like positioned to win. So I like Jiang Lee in this spot. I do like Hyder Mill too as an underdog. Um, not as an underdog, but just period. You know, I made money with them in this last time out. And this 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 minus one ninety is too high for my liking to play it straight or and kind of to do anything with this. So I'm a, I'm gonna be staying off that fight. If anything, I'm gonna play fight not going the distance. All right, next fight taking place. Bill Algio, eighteen and eight. Minus 170 on the books, taking on Duho Choi. All right, man, let's go. I like Duho Choi in here, man. Plus 145 for the underdog right here. I think he's the better fighter. He's one of those Korean fighters that had to do his time out there. Three years in the military. And then he came back and fought Kyle Nelson and went to a draw. Went only to a draw because, man, I think he lost a point in that fight. If he didn't lose that point in the fight... He would have got the win. And this one, Bill Algio, he got knocked out in his last time out against Kyle Nelson. That's that's that's, that's crazy. All right, not not too crazy, but it's just that they both fought Kyle Nelson. You know, what, what's the? Let's get it though. Bill Algio, he is a good fighter too. He's gonna go out there and push the face. Um, you know, he has good cardio and stuff, but he doesn't have a uh, defense at all, and he's there to be hit. There's no way I'm laying minus 170 with Bill Algio. And honestly, I just think that Duho Choi, when it came out to it, the landscape and the outlook, he was supposed to be a fighter that was supposed to be great. Bill Algio was supposed to be good. You know, just leave it at that. All right. So I like Duho Choi in here. This is the underdog that I think that's going to get us paid to start off the main card. Let's go ahead and go. Next fight taking place, man. Cody Durden taking on Bruno Silva. Cody Durden. It's only a minus 120 for him. Taking on Bruno Silva, a fighter who doesn't really fight that much. I think he's on a one and a half year layoff. Uh, used to train over the fight ready. He's an explosive jujitsu uh, fighter. He has good striking, okay? Cody Durden is a wrestler. Goes for the takedowns, but he's decent on the feet, too. Um, you know, he's been putting together, uh, you know, some 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 good striking uh, practices over there. American top team actually has a win uh, by KO over JP Bar. I remember that one. But Cody Dern is a dog, folks. He's one of those guys that's going to go out there and fight for your money, man. He almost had his arm ripped off against Jake Hadley. What'd he do? He won. You know what I mean? Took the fight and, and, and got the job done. And this one, I think the same thing could be said in here, man. I think Cody Dern is going to be able to push the pace. Um, you know, I think he fought and trained with fighters like Bruno Silva in his up and comings in the last, you know, year or two. Compared to Bruno Silva, who doesn't really fight that much, you know, and is kind of, I think he's on his second gym now. I think he left fight ready, so he's not even over there no more under Henry Cejudo. Um, and, you know, we haven't seen enough of Bruno Silva. 
uh, just to get a real good game plan on him. But I know he does have the advantage in striking. And if Bruno Silva's path to victory, he can win by submission because Cody Durden has been subbed in a lot of fights. Bruno Silva, uh, you know, he's good with the submissions as well. But I got to go with Cody Durden, man. I think he's going to be able to get the job done. He's been saying it on Twitter. I've been waiting to punch him in his face, um, you know, and he's one of those guys. He talks the talk and he gets in that goddamn cage and he walks that walk. Give me Cody Dirty, man. That's what we're going to put our money on this week. Next fight taking place. Kai... Uh, Kanan Kraskowski, a 15 and 2, taking on Kurt Hollaball. All right, man, let's get down to it. Kanan got finished, just like Kanan from Power in his in the in the, in his last fight out, man. But this this time, Kurt Hollaball, he was coming off a loss off a of Trey Ogden in there. Um, he's one the Ultimate Fighter. I'm not too impressed with none of these guys, but in here I actually like Kanan. I think he's gonna be able to get the the win. I'm not going to spend too much time on this fight at all because this is a fight that I'm just not interested in, okay? Um, so I, I'm going to just go with Kanan in that one. Next fight taking place. We got Steve Garcia taking on Sing Wa. Uh, Song Wei Chu. Let's go ahead and get it, man. All right, minus 140 for Steve Garcia. I like Cho in this spot, man. I was just going back and forth, okay? Steve Garcia, he's a guy. He's going out there in the first round trying to finish you. And the same thing is said about Choi, but... Troy can take a hit and come back up and still fight. Steve Garcia, he can take a hit, get knocked down, and still come up and fight. But he's been knocked down way more times than single Troy in the last recent days. Okay? Um, so, I like the I like the dog in this one. And then, like I said, I think there's an outline to this. Okay? There's a few Korean and Japanese and Chinese fighters on here. And I... It's, I think they are all are looking good for the position for the win, man, in here. Um, and I definitely like fight not going the distance. Play the unders, 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 unders. I don't think that's even getting to the third round in there either. But, um, yeah, definitely, man. Um, next fight taking place, man. Cold main event time. Brad Tavares, 20 wins, 10 losses, taking on Jung Young Park, a.k.a. the Iron Turtle. Minus 160 for the Iron Turtle, Jung Young Park. Fight IQ. I like Jung Young Park. Fight resume, I like Jung Young Park. And, I mean, the overall aura, I like Jung Young Park, man. And he does his dance after he celebrates and gets a win. Brad Tavares, this guy's been around the UFC for a while now. But it seems like they never showcased him to get fights to where they wanted him to actually win. They give him the fights to where it's, hey, go fight DDP. Hey, go fight Izzy Alexander. Like, you know, like, go fight all the names that we want them to win, okay? He is coming off of a win over Chris Weidman. But as of his last fight, he got knocked out by Gregory Rodriguez, which a lot of people do. As I was saying in there, hey, they want Gregory Rodriguez to win. Go ahead and fight Brad Tavares. And the same thing could be said in the Chris Weidman fight. That's a fight to where you set that up on paper and you're like, hey, Weidman. You can maybe win this one. Who got for you? We got Brad Tavares. Okay, sign me up. All right. I like Jung Young Park in this one, man. He opened up at a minus 185 and came down to a minus 160. I'm playing him straight in this one, folks. Let's go ahead and get it. All right, man. Main event time. But before we do that, I need all you guys to smash that like button for me right now. Hit up the comments for me. Let me know exactly who you guys are betting on and who do you guys going to think is going to win the belt in the next big pay-per-view event between Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad. Who do you think is going to win between, man, Curtis Blades and Tom Aspinall? Let me know in the comments below. All right, main event time. Verna uh, Jandaroba, 20 wins and three losses, taking on Amanda Lemos. Minus 135 for Verna Jandaroba in this spot. She's going to be the grappler out there, jujitsu specialist. She's going to try to take you down to the ground and submit you any way that she can. That's her game plan. Amanda Lemos, she's not gonna, the greatest fighter when it comes to cardio, but she's good at striking. She's good at submissions too. The fight resume, I got to go with her. Uh, the finish ability, I like her finish ability. But I'm betting Werner Janaroba in this spot, man. Um, two of these fighters kind of are similar, okay? I thought Janaroba was going to be the underdog in here. Like, Lemos fought Zele Wang for the belt, you know? Like, Lemos' caliber of opponents is, is way better than Janaroba. And the books, Ryan Janaroba has a minus 130 favorite. I looked at it. I looked at the whole thing, everything on the card. This was one that I really lined up with, even though, you know, I thought that she should be an underdog. 
She's in the apex, folks. I think she's going to be able to get the takedowns in there. Amanda Lemos has been subbed before. And if it stays on the feet, of course, Amanda Lemos can knock her out. But I think Vernon Janderope is smart enough and, you know, it's going to have a good enough game plan to extend this and get Amanda Lemos a little bit tired. And, you know, like I said, she's going to be relentless out there rolling, doing everything she can to take you down to try to submit you. You know, she averages about two, two and a half takedowns per fight. I think she wins by sub. Let's go ahead and get it done. And I don't think that fight's going the distance. All right, man, let's go ahead and give you guys a parlay to get you guys paid, man. All right, man, I'm going to go ahead and take Miranda Maverick. You know, and then I'm going to go ahead and give you guys, uh, let's see, who else did I want to give you guys? Well, you guys already know, man. Let's take the Iron Turtle, okay? All right? No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not going to do that one. Why not? Because we're just not. Why not? Let's take Miranda Maverick and Cody Gibson. Meet me at the books. Meet me at the window and let's get paid. Miranda Maverick, Cody Gibson, two-team parlay. Um, and yeah, let me know exactly who you guys are betting on. MMA locker room here, part of Pick Dogs. If you can't roll with the Pick Dogs, stay on the porch because we prop shopping.